This is another installment of a clinically press short, and on this one we are going to talk evidence-based practice versus evidence-influenced practice. Uh, first thing we want to cover is what is evidence-based practice, or EBP, as we might refer to it throughout the short. Uh, it's been a big push, at least from my side in the athletic training world, of everything that you should be looking at doing is done based on the evidence that you're found, hence the evidence-based practice. So going through the research, finding the things that make sense when it comes to doing different things, whether it's a treatment or a rehab program or anything of that nature, all based in the evidence. And that's also something that's been a huge push when it comes to the educational side, especially in athletic training. I can't comment on everybody else, but I got to imagine that it's pretty um, uniform across the board. Well, I personally have kind of struggled with evidence-based practice, and we've talked about it a little bit in some articles on total athletic therapy and the art versus science of doing things. Uh, but then I was listening to Guru Performance, another podcast that's worth checking out, and the host there um, said a word or a phrase called evidence influence practice, and I had never heard it said that way before, and it was something I couldn't figure out how to articulate on my own, and it just kind of changed my thought process and hence this short. So the thing that we want to kind of talk about is there's been this push of evidence-based practice and I don't know if it's the right way to go or not. And the best example I've had, and it's a simple example, it doesn't cover everything, but it is an example, is when I worked heavily with distance runners and IT band syndrome. Uh, we were going through a rash of it at a former institution I worked at, and I really wanted to figure out how to fix it. And so I went through PubMed and found about every article I possibly could on IT band syndrome and how to change it and improve it. Um, from surgery cases to just general rehab and started reading one and it talked a lot about working on external rotation strength and abduction strength so moving your leg away um, of your hip and that would help in the prevention and intuitively this made some sense to me that if you strengthen up that help control the biomechanics of the body you can go and maybe potentially reduce the prevalence of IT band syndrome which is I believe more of a movement pattern fault and repetitive motion than it is something that just happens well that was great and I was ready to go and then I read another study that looked at the same thing and found absolutely no correlation to it that it didn't help that it was basically just a waste of time and it was like well what are you supposed to do and that brought me to a bigger question. You know, can we get too caught up in science? Can we look at things like that too much? And really, if I would have gone and looked at just those two things, I would have ended up doing nothing, which obviously isn't going to help the student athlete and it's not going to make them get any better. So with that, could we take this too far? I know um, a colleague of mine has made some comments that a lot of the things we utilize, yeast and ultrasound, some of these other ones, the evidence isn't necessarily there on how they work in terms of these significant outcomes. But at the same time, they seem to work. We get people feeling better, maybe, you know, and the reason for that we could argue about for days, but there is, does seem to be something to do it. And I think that's where that comes into the art effect of it all you know i think the other things we have to play into is the placebo effect you know doing something whether it's actually proven in the research to do it or not because we're doing something can make somebody feel better can help improve things uh, i also think the power of the mind is hugely important in this this is an area that i've listened to a couple different podcasts read a few different things that you know basically if your mind isn't set up to get it done it's not going to get better so I think that's something we have to take a um, very close look at and really try and help with where some of our treatments, if you believe it's going to make you better, well, guess what? It's probably going to help in some way or the other in most cases. Uh, going on from this, I think this is where the evidence influence practice couldn't be utilized the most. I'm a big believer in the art and science of doing everything. It kind of comes back to my own personal jack-of-all-trades theory. Um, that that's a good way to go and that you want to stay current on the research. There's a reason we do it and it's highly beneficial. And again, this is just in kind of the athletic training and rehab realm. I think when you start going into pharmaceuticals and some very advanced technique type things, 
research is huge and paramount because we have to know if things are working or not before we start bringing in other substances to the bodies and things like that so don't take this too far with what i'm saying but in my realm with the rehab the treatment and the training i think evidence influence practice is the best way to go you still got to figure out what works for you clinically and in your experience but you need to be able to stay and look at the evidence to make sure you're staying current because there are things that do go one way and then go the other nutrition is a huge example as it kind of ebb and flows throughout history and what's good what's bad what's this and that same thing with some of the ways we've treated you know potential spinal injuries before it went from you have to lock them down to now they're easing up on that a little bit because evidence is showing things again i think it's all comes back to having the evidence influence your practice but at the end of the day using your clinical reasoning to make sure that you are doing what makes sense to you and what makes the best outcome possible for your patient, your athlete, your client, whatever it may be. So that's my argument for looking at evidence-based practice versus evidence-influence practice. And I hope you guys have a good day.